Hello, I would be very grateful for your opinion on my current predicament. Perhaps I need to conduct a self-analysis and evaluate my thoughts to determine if this is one of those situations where I usually think the other person is stupid and think it's better to break up. My wife and I have been together for 10 years, and we have been married for 2 years. This relationship is the first for both of us. We are proud parents of a 3-year-old son. About 6 months ago, my wife admitted that she was not satisfied with our relationship, although she could not name the exact reason. We had a lot of conversations, and in the end, she put the blame on herself. When we first started dating, we were young and full of dreams. Over time, we achieved everything we dreamed of. Now we live in a beautiful house with a swimming pool and a garden, surrounded by a loving family and our wonderful son. We are financially secure, earning more than $300,000 a year, and do not experience serious problems. However, my wife began to doubt that this is all there is in her life and that she may have missed something. She expressed a feeling of dissatisfaction, admitting that it has nothing to do with me because I have devoted my whole life to providing for her and our son. She promised me that she would make an effort to overcome these emotions, but from that moment on, I had serious suspicions. Since such a conversation often means the beginning of the end of a relationship, my wife has never been particularly demanding in matters of intimacy, and in most cases, our intimate life was quite satisfactory. Sometimes we had periods of two to three weeks without much physical activity, but there was nothing terrible about it. We constantly made sure that it reached its peak, studied various techniques to enhance the sensory experience. Now let's move on to what happened recently. I came across deleted Facebook messages on my computer, which she inadvertently left open after using. Suddenly, a message appeared and disappeared before my eyes. It was just a harmless conversation, nothing special, but she admitted that she had it fearing that I might misinterpret it and wanting to save us from a possible stormy conversation. Deep down, I knew it was a harmless conversation, but I couldn't shake the feeling of anger that she hid it from me. Oddly enough, the message was not even from the person I initially suspected, but just a casual conversation. Despite its insignificance, she was afraid that it could damage our relationship. I must admit that this incident left me feeling betrayed, although this was the first case of betrayal for which I decided to forgive her. During our conversation, I emphasized the perniciousness of such behavior, expressing my sincere intentions. Over time, innocent conversations turned into flirting, and in the end, at one of the corporate events where alcohol was present, they tried to cross physical boundaries with her. As a married woman, she had to put an end to such a relationship. A week ago, I was seized with a feeling of anxiety, although I can't name the exact reason. I've never done stalking, but on our wedding anniversary, I gave her a new iPhone, knowing she had a backup of messages on her laptop. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to restore these messages on her old phone. What I saw became something crushing for me and made my heart beat at breakneck speed. I came across a message in which he confessed his love to her and expressed his desire to be with her. He is a married colleague with a family with three children. During the investigation, I found videos that he sent to her, but could not find any evidence that she reciprocated. Without hesitation, I told her about my findings, and she admitted that she had come into contact with him just two weeks before. She said that he persistently molested her, in one case tried to kiss her, which she managed to stop but did not inform me about it. Then, on another working day, he persuaded her to go to a separate room with him to discuss the situation and immediately began physical contact, passionately kissing her and unbuttoning her jeans, which eventually led to intimacy. According to her, she felt trapped and did not know how to get out of the situation, trying to quietly reject his advances. At that moment, she did not directly refuse or say no, allowing the act to take place. She knew perfectly well that she was making a mistake, pondered the possible consequences, was afraid that everything would end but could not find the strength to stop herself. She endured, waited for it to be over, and endured for only two minutes, after which she felt empty. After that, she left, got into the car bursting into tears, and went to pick up our son from kindergarten, having decided to break off all relations. She immediately took measures to terminate contacts and remove all evidence. She insisted that he do the same, but he ignored her request and sent the messages I came across. Since then, she has remained completely silent, refusing to make contact or send any messages. Moreover, 
she has the opportunity to completely avoid him at work if she decides to do so. When I found out about her cheating, I was terribly angry, not understanding how she could do this. At that moment, I said that our relationship was over, and I started planning a divorce. She, on the contrary, has come to terms with this fact, fully understanding the gravity of her act. She sobbed inconsolably while I treated her with complete contempt and considered her the lowest form of human existence. I couldn't bear the thought of looking at her, and I desperately wanted her out of my life. Curiously, after this incident, she thought about leaving me but hardly found the strength to do so. In truth, she couldn't bring herself to do it because she still loved me so much, but I found out about it before she had time to make her decision. The day after this incident, we had a family weekend planned, which our son had been looking forward to for several weeks. The event was attended by my parents, her parents, her brother and sister-in-law, as well as my nephew. In order to preserve a joyful event for our son and harmony in our large family, I decided to suppress my emotions and hide the truth. During this time, we managed to hold two lengthy conversations of three hours each, which allowed us to conduct an open dialogue. These conversations allowed me to listen and calmly express my thoughts. I realized that she strongly regrets her action and has been in a state of confusion for more than six months. Seeing what an emotional blow it caused me, how I broke down and distanced myself, she feels pain. She would like to quit her job and seek professional advice to move on. She is ready to do anything to save our marriage, even if it means signing any agreement that guarantees serious consequences in the event of a repeat of such an incident. I never imagined myself in such a situation because I always believed that if I changed once, then it would always change, and that I would leave without hesitation if I ever faced betrayal. And yet, when the moment came, I fulfilled my promise and began the process of parting. But when I see her and my son, I feel that I am unable to fulfill this decision. The thought that in the event of a divorce, I will be able to see my son only one or two days a week is unbearable. The thought that at some point in her life, our family may be irreparably destroyed fills me with longing and fear. If my ex-wife had found a new partner, another father figure would have appeared in our son's life. Just thinking about it makes me sick. Adding insult to injury is the fact that I didn't do anything wrong. She repeatedly assured me that everything was fine. I treated her with respect and gave her the attention she deserved. Only her own confusion in life led to this unpleasant situation, which, as she promised me many times, has already been resolved. She wants me to come back, she wants our family to stay whole. It was just one mistake in ten years. Nothing like this has ever happened before. I have always loved her wholeheartedly. She was the one I imagined growing old with, the one I trusted completely. She is my beautiful angel, and the pain of this betrayal is boundless. Every time I look at her, a vivid image of that scene pops up in my memory, and it becomes almost unbearable. All I wanted was a happy, strong family. I want to be present in my son's life, to fulfill my role as a father, but the anger that engulfed me is due to the fact that earlier we had already discussed her life confusion, and I even offered a consultation as a means of support. But she categorically refused, believing that her problems are exclusively her personal problem. She was offended at me for pointing out to her that such vulnerability could lead to infidelity, but she vehemently denied such a possibility. Despite the fact that I felt it all the time on some level, I was powerless to prevent it. And now I'm here, thinking about whether it's possible to continue the relationship. I doubt whether it's worth it. If it wasn't for my son, everything would have collapsed. The dream of an ideal family that I imagined would be destroyed. The consequences that await us in the event of a breakup of relations seem too serious. She cannot afford to maintain the house, and I will have to take out an additional mortgage to help her fulfill her part of the obligations, despite the fact that I am the main financial source, earning approximately $300,000. Currently, she only works 25 hours a week, mainly doing housework and caring for our son. The idea that she might move in with my son seems terrible to me. I am torn between two options, to endure the pain by staying with her, to witness her lies and betrayal towards me, or to face the unbearable reality of a destroyed family. The idea that I will have to live without a loved one and a son seems terrible, and the prospect of financial collapse is frightening, although I admit that this is a secondary problem. Despite everything, I sincerely believe in her remorse and desire to clarify her thoughts and actions. It's hard for me to doubt that my confidence in this is naive or stupid, 
but I needed to express these mixed emotions by writing them down. I never wanted to be an owner or controlling partner, always giving her the freedom to enjoy her evenings or pursue her own interests. But now, trust has become a problem for me. I'm afraid I might turn into someone I never wanted to be, tormented by doubts and wanting to control her every move. Will I be able to trust her again after seeing what kind of person she has become? It's unpleasant to see this unfamiliar side of her personality. Moreover, I am concerned about how this experience can change me as a person. Previously, when I was faced with the courtship of attractive women, I immediately rejected them and distanced myself from the situation. But I'm afraid that in the future, I may succumb to the thought, if she could, then why can't I? At the same time, I understand that such a way of thinking would be a betrayal of my own values and principles. I have to be able to maintain my decency and stay true to who I am. I cannot understand how she could not foresee the consequences of her actions and find the strength to prevent them. It is surprising to think that she allowed this only because she wanted intimacy from the outside, despite receiving a huge amount of affection from me. She was still looking for compliments and treated everything as a joke. I'm wondering if any of you have faced a similar situation and how you handled it. Have you been able to return love to your loved one? Am I overreacting? After all, it was just a small physical mistake. It is possible that she could also become a victim of rudeness, and I have to accept this possibility. Moreover, if I meet and enter into an intimate relationship with another woman, there is always a possibility that she also had a similar experience just a few weeks before, and in general terms, it may not make a significant difference. Open relationships exist and are accepted by certain people. My mind is now in a state of confusion and disbelief. I have a friend who even willingly takes his wife on dates and finds happiness in watching it. It is difficult to comprehend such situations. It's incredibly difficult to accept the fact that a person can never be completely transparent, and that's what bothers me the most. Until now, I had no doubt, believed everything she told me. But after this incident, I began to have doubts, and I cannot understand whether her story is completely true or she is hiding something from me. Despite these doubts, I am inclined to believe her. Even if she had left home, I would not have had any uneasy premonitions that she would go to meet another man. I don't quite understand why I think so, either because of my own naivety or because of a desperate need to believe in her honesty. Interestingly, I was always very jealous and afraid of betrayal. It seems that in the past, before our relationship, she had already encountered similar cases of infidelity, which may explain her deep-rooted jealousy and fear of betrayal. As for how she told about her actions, I caught her at the scene of the crime, and she confessed that she probably wouldn't have confessed if I hadn't found out about it. She acknowledged the seriousness of her act and said that she could not correct her mistake. She knew about my firm position regarding infidelity and understood that this would mean the end of our relationship. Although she didn't want to continue living with the burden of responsibility for her actions, she also didn't want to hurt me by ending the relationship. She was torn between the desire to break up and at the same time, the desire to save our life together. In her desperate search for support and advice, she confided in her friend, who, as it turned out, was a bridesmaid at our wedding. This friend is the only person who is aware of the situation, but even she found out about it only after everything had already happened. Despite asking for help, my wife could not bring herself to stop the affair. As I found out the truth before she could fully realize her intentions, she turned to her colleague, asking him to remove all traces of their communication. On her own initiative, she deleted all the evidence from her devices, blocking him on all platforms except Skype. Their shared workspace was also part of her efforts to break up the relationship. It was as a result of one mistake when she accidentally showed the same text to her friend without deleting it that I found out everything. During our conversation, I saw her tears and overflowing emotions. At first, she remained calm, withstanding all the accusations and anger that I directed at her. But the tears intensified when she asked in desperation what she could do to convince me to stay. At that moment, I firmly said that there was nothing left between us. In response, she began to list everything that comes to her mind, expressing her willingness to sacrifice other moments of her life. She offered to give up friendships, work, hobbies, all this in order to save our relationship and be with me. I don't want to accept her offer because I don't want her to become a completely different person at the cost of our relationship. Deep down, 
I know that such radical changes will eventually lead to her unhappiness and may cause even more problems in the future. Trying to convince me of her devotion to our marriage, she is ready to sign an agreement that in the event of a similar situation in the future, she loses everything and does not receive any financial compensation. I'm not sure if such an agreement is possible in our country from a legal point of view. It is important to note that she is not sincerely motivated by money or material goods. Her main task is to provide a stable and comfortable home for our son, together with me, because she recognizes her responsibility for the breakup of our relationship. At the same time, the division of property and the determination of a fair division scheme is a difficult task, given that most of our joint acquisitions were made during the marriage. According to my estimates, she will receive from me about $300,000 in monthly alimony in the amount of $800. It's not that she's afraid she won't be able to lead her old lifestyle anymore. She fully understands the consequences of her mistakes and is ready to face them. She is ready to openly discuss what happened and take full responsibility for our divorce. She deeply understands the possible loss of the opportunity for me to continue the relationship and does not underestimate the seriousness of the situation. There is despair and disappointment in her words. She regrets the choice of the path that led to such an outcome. At the moment, I have not asked her to share the details with other people as I have not yet come to a firm decision on what to do in this situation. I don't want her to bear the burden of shame from the general condemnation and scrutiny. I am currently considering keeping this situation a secret if everything she has told turns out to be true. I decided not to tell the spouse of another person about this, despite the fact that I had already spoken about my intention to do this and offered her to give him an ultimatum to confess within two days. She firmly said that she would not contact him for any reason in the future and leaves the decision to me. But I'm not ready to make a final decision yet. This may seem erroneous or weak, but after careful consideration, I adhere to this position. It is important to note that we have shared access to every password and GPS navigator, which allows me to view everything if necessary. Although at the very beginning of our relationship, we discussed the possibility of sharing each other's passwords. In fact, we never used this opportunity. For all the time of our life together, we have never hidden anything behind unknown passwords, and there was no need for such measures. But when it comes to the problems of violation and expansion of borders, I experience an internal struggle. On the one hand, I asked her how naive she had to be not to recognize the situation and not put an end to it. She admitted that at first, their conversation seemed normal, they even discussed their partners and children. But when he started complimenting her, she started deleting messages, knowing full well that this situation was unpleasant for me. After I found the first series of deleted messages, I was overcome by a sense of betrayal. I want to clarify that there has never been any digital flirting between them, he also did not show such behavior. He only expressed a desire to be alone with her, as they were often surrounded by colleagues at work. At the same time, however, it is important to note that she had no intention of entering into a physical relationship with him because she is not interested in intimacy with anyone else. This aspect adds additional complexity to the situation. Having known her for 10 years, I have always been sure that intimacy is not an important priority in her life. It is important to clarify that my ex-wife did not seek casual or short-term relationships before our meeting. She had never experienced a feeling of passion and did not find pleasure in intimate contacts. I am sure of this because even in the first months of our relationship, she did not enjoy physical intimacy. I can judge her past experience by my close relationships with some of her friends who knew her long before we started dating. Given these facts, I want to emphasize that everything I have told about this situation is true. Although it is difficult for some to believe, there was no plan to meet outside of work and deceive me about her whereabouts. There was no intention to dress up and behave in a deceptive way. It must be admitted that my wife has never fantasized about intimate contacts with anyone other than me. The situation in which she found herself was unexpected for her. She did not expect and did not want this. When she told me about it, my initial reaction was shock and disappointment. I screamed, God! Are you incredibly stupid? I couldn't understand how she could allow such a development of events, knowing that it was an unreasonable and morally wrong decision. In anger and disbelief, I wondered if she had made up the whole story, doubting her honesty and possibly underestimating my intelligence. 
It is important to note that shouting and showing such aggression towards her are not typical of my behavior or our relationship. The strong mixture of emotions, including palpitations and intense anger that arise after realizing such betrayal, is difficult to understand if you do not experience them firsthand. At the time of this discovery, I did not know the full context and details that I now know. Initially, she presented the situation as potentially offensive, but after further discussion, clarified that it was not cruelty. She never explicitly stated her refusal or asked him to stop. Instead, she just waited for it to be over, not knowing how to get out of this situation. It is very difficult to understand whether her story is true or it is a fiction masking her own inadequacy. Although it may seem doubtful and tempting, some part of me is inclined to believe her and consider the possibility of her honest intention. It is important to emphasize that flirting and seductive behavior with other people have never been characteristic of her. Faced with this situation, she realized that she could not imagine life without me. For me, this moment of betrayal crossed everything out. As for the registration of guardianship, it is customary in our country for a child to live mainly with his mother. As a rule, the father is granted visitation rights, which can take place every second weekend or possibly every weekend, depending on the mother's wishes. These conditions can be adjusted if the mother does not demonstrate serious violations of discipline or does not abuse substances. She told me that I have the freedom to see my son every day if I want to, and she will not prevent it. She admits that I am the most significant figure in his life, even more significant than herself, because he looks up to me. But let's be realistic, over time, she may find a new person, and then it will not be so easy and convenient to maintain frequent visits and agreed plans. And although such a scheme may work for some time, it will not be able to repeat the experience of a single family. The presence of affection, attention, and care is something that is not easy to replicate. She made it clear that I had done nothing wrong and had never let her down. She assures me that my interests and efforts in our relationship have never been insufficient and surprises were not expected. I was constantly talking about my love for her, demonstrating it in every possible way. I truly believe that I don't deserve the pain she caused me, and it was unpleasant to hear compliments from someone other than me. At the same time, she acknowledged the wrongness of the fact that she's looking for and appreciates compliments from someone outside of our relationship. In our recent conversation, she again admitted that she was pleased with the attention he was paying her, and at first, she did not consider it something bad. At the same time, she admitted that she was not sure that he would confess his love to her and how it could be understood. Receiving compliments from him, she never actively responded to them and could not understand how he could become so attached to her. Despite this, she admitted that she likes his attention. The startling revelation was that she admitted that she had lied about her previous partners, claiming that she had had a relationship before me, while in fact, she remained innocent. She invented these stories out of youthful self-doubt, wanting to hide her true status. During the period of her personal crisis, she was tormented by thoughts of self-doubt, doubts that perhaps it was too early for her to make commitments, that she had missed something in life, and other doubts. It is important to note that she never wanted to engage in extramarital intimate relationships and did not think that this would happen as a result of a simple exchange of opinions. She openly admitted that during this incident, she simply turned off her brain. It was always a priority for her to be close to me, her son, and her friends, but she rarely took care of her own needs. At that moment, she allowed herself to go with the flow, curiously watching how events would develop. But when the kissing started, she immediately realized that it was a mistake, a decision she didn't want to make. But despite this, she was absorbed in the moment, turned off her mind, allowing it to happen. It is important to understand that this was not abuse, rather, it was a consequence of her uncertainty about what to do both in this particular situation and in her life as a whole. The details of her story look plausible and not made up, probably due to the fact that she was caught in the act. If it is proven to be true, and it may take time, I am ready to make efforts to fix our marriage and try to restore what was destroyed. I gave her the opportunity to show why I should stay with her and how she plans to restore the destroyed trust. This will undoubtedly be a difficult stage since I cannot change my feelings and thoughts in an instant. I will have to perceive her as a new person, separate from the person who made those terrible mistakes that cannot be corrected. And yet, I am ready to embark on this difficult path, hoping to find a way out of this hellish state in which I am now. 
I am determined to give her all my strength and try to improve our relationship, especially considering the 10 years we have lived together and our son. But I want to be clear that if I ever find out that everything she told me was not entirely true and honest, then it will mean the final end of our relationship. But at the moment, I'm not ready to close this chapter. Deep down, I understand that I have the potential to find happiness and create joyful moments even without her presence. I understand that any difficulties related to our son can be solved with the help of time and effort. But I know for sure that there will come a time when I will miss her presence in my life very much. I think that I will really miss the feeling of family that we once had, and the question will always live in me about whether there was even the slightest opportunity to correct and restore what was lost. In the next six months, I will diligently walk this path to see if reconciliation is possible. If this fails, then I will be ready to move on. I understand that I have invested a significant amount of time in this relationship, 10 years, and although another 6 months may seem like wasted time to me, if the situation does not improve, I am willing to be patient in order to thoroughly explore all possibilities. It took a long time and I made the difficult decision to end the relationship because she turned out to be a lying woman. Even after numerous discussions, some points in her explanations did not converge, which led to a breakdown of trust. In search of a clue, I found recordings of conversations for one month in which she confessed to him her love and desire to be together. They engaged in intimate activities, fulfilling all kinds of desires. This discovery has intensified the pain and shock that I am experiencing now. The videos I found serve as indisputable proof of a full-fledged affair for nine months. They discussed the issues of leaving me, finding a new apartment, and other details. When I told her about it, a heated argument ensued between us during which I expressed confidence that our marriage had been irreparably damaged and it could not be restored. I made it clear to her that this meant the final end of our relationship without the possibility of reconciliation. In response, she moved on to a more strident conversation, claiming that she wanted to claim her share in the divorce process, including 50% of our house and all our joint property. I turned to a lawyer friend for advice, and he suggested that her chances of receiving significant compensation might decrease due to the fact that I have clear evidence and her responsibility for the breakdown of our marriage. In response, she got angry and threatened to restrict my access to our son if I sought a divorce in a controversial situation. Realizing that this was an emotional reaction, I kept calm and explained what steps would be taken in the future. Then she told her parents about the situation. Later, when I was putting my son to bed, there was another quarrel when she demanded that I delete all records from my phone. I have decided to keep the evidence intact as it may be needed for legal purposes, but I understand her concerns about the possible consequences in the event of our controversial divorce. She angrily stated that if the situation worsened, I might not be able to see our son. At this tense moment, she turned to her and my father. Her father was shocked and spent two hours in tears after meeting my father. Both fathers are aware of the situation and are fully aware of the seriousness of her actions. Her father even apologized, admitting the cruelty of the situation and not believing what she had done. In search of solace and advice, I turned to my best friend to get support and recover. When I got home, she started talking again. During this conversation, she acknowledged the extent of her mistakes and admitted that she had screwed up badly. She admitted that it was difficult for her to resist the temptation of finding a relationship outside of marriage because it gave her the opportunity to experience different ways of connecting with other people. Despite repeated attempts to end this relationship, she returned to it every time. This is a cycle in which both sides participated. She admits that she has become addicted to this unhealthy dynamic. At one point, she showed frustration, trying to pin the blame on me for not saving her from the situation. But I want to emphasize that I was constantly supporting her, offering various counseling options, and looking for ways to help her. It is important to understand that she hoped that I would make a decision to quit my job since she herself considered herself unable to do it. She has a strong desire to return to her former life, and it is clear how depressed she is that the world around her is being destroyed. She is constantly crying and asking what needs to be done so that I make an attempt to fix the situation. But she crossed too many boundaries which makes it impossible to save our relationship. It would mean sacrificing my principles and everything that is dear to me, and even in this case, I would not be able to perceive her in the same light and trust her again. Only now, after I firmly said that it was over, she began to understand the seriousness of the situation. 
it was a colossal mistake on her part connected with one person in ten years. The words addressed to him were deceptive, and her real desire for him was not, although I admit that she may have been in a state of confusion and uncertainty. This does not justify her actions. She had the opportunity to seek help and advice before the affair gained momentum, but she chose not to. Only when she finally came to terms with the fact that there was no hope for a relationship did she admit that our son would be better off with me. She realized that I could give him more, both financially and emotionally, because she gave up her own life. We will learn about the consequences in the near future when we start working with lawyers and undergo mandatory marriage counseling for the sake of our children, which are necessary for the divorce process. She no longer wants to claim half of our property and is content with what she had before our relationship began. I agree with this state of affairs, despite my hatred for her. I am ready to provide her with everything necessary so that she has a place where our son could sometimes stay with her. In the end, she realized that this was not just a mistake but her own stupidity. While I calmly explained everything to her, she has repeatedly tried to come back to me. But now that she has realized that everything is really over, she is determined to make peace. She is broken, her tears seem endless. She fully understands the damage she has done and the ordeal she will have to endure for the rest of her life. I believe in her repentance, but it's too late for reconciliation. I apologize to everyone who found themselves in a similar situation, but I must advise you not to have hopes for a better outcome. Prepare for the worst, as it is inevitable. Although I am broken, I find comfort in the fact that I am in a better position now than in those uncertain days when I was contemplating forgiveness and a future with her. At this moment, I feel strong. I understand that there may be moments ahead that will plunge me into depression, but I am determined to fight them. We are currently in the process of divorce, although I have repeatedly thought about staying. But I can't bring myself to continue a relationship in which trust is destroyed and the essence of a real marriage no longer exists. There are many reasons that prevent me from staying, but most of all, I'm afraid of losing those precious 100% of family time that I have with my son right now. If everything goes the way it goes, then I will only be able to spend 6 days with him, and 14 days is the maximum I can get. Unfortunately, our imperfect legal system can only allow me to spend weekends with my son, and this cannot but upset me. She accepted that we would spend time together in the proportion of 60 to 40. The idea of having a full-fledged family and spending a lot of time together has always been dear to me. The only way to make this a reality is to stay and consider reconciliation. But even if I were given a 100% guarantee that such a betrayal would never happen again, I would still have to be next to a person who, despite my forgetfulness in the past, showed himself to be truly terrible. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to bring myself to do this, or if my resentment is just too deeply ingrained. The puzzling thing is that I sincerely believe that she repents, that she has changed or will change. But on the other hand, doubts still remain in my head. Isn't it true that everyone believes that they have found someone who has changed and will never repeat their past mistakes? I also once believed that I had found a man who would never cheat on me. It feels like I'm voluntarily deceiving myself again, just to keep the hope of a family life. I am ready to take on the burden of responsibility for the fact that I will never be completely happy if it means protecting my son from the consequences. I am sure that there is an opportunity for all of us to experience genuine happiness, free from toxicity, and at the same time, my son will never notice anything wrong. We have managed to maintain this semblance of peace over the past three months, and it offers a way forward. I did not demand these measures because I cannot imagine a future in which I will constantly monitor my wife. She decided to make changes to her work by providing GPS data when she goes anywhere and agreeing to weekly or sudden restoration of the phone to prevent possible deletions. I always had access to all her accounts on my phone, and at one point, I even installed spyware. We attended marriage counseling, and all this time I lived with the realization that I would never be able to love her the way I used to. At the moment, I am seeking a divorce on my own terms, ensuring the division of property and excluding the possibility of further discussion of the issue of obtaining additional benefits for her in the event of our future separation. My lawyer informed me that postnuptial agreements could be challenged in the future, which would make them potentially ineffective. In an effort to ensure transparency and trust, I am considering offering her a lie detector test to make sure she is not hiding any additional information. She even expressed her willingness to sell her new car, as it was involved in the affair. 
she has already taken the initiative to talk to our family members about what happened, admit her actions, and offer sincere apologies. I have to admit that she revealed an affair that I would never have known about otherwise, which shows her desire for complete honesty. She has answered all my questions regarding this painful story and is ready to answer any other questions that may arise. She took the initiative to make plans for our son, planned a new room, organized vacations, and trips for our future together. But I expressed my dissatisfaction because I had previously said that we might not have a future. She sincerely understood my concerns and decided to abandon these plans, focusing on making me feel calmer by taking gradual steps. It is important to note that she made these plans as a way to show her loyalty and dedication to our family. She showed the deepest respect and gratitude for my decision to stay and carefully consider my options. Over the past three months, she really understands that I can't be in a relationship with her and accepts that I don't want it. She kept hoping that she would still have time, that everything could change for the better, and that time would heal the wounds that I carry inside me. She vowed to do everything possible to ensure the happiness of both me and my son. At the same time, she understands that she needs to let go of the situation and not discuss all possible ways to improve it. It's an act of respect for my decision to leave and a way to prevent further suffering because I'm holding onto her too tightly. Deep down, she really wants to try to find a way to keep our family together but admits that she can't let me go. At the moment, she is still open to finding ways out of this difficult situation and assures me that I can ask her anything. She refuses to blame me for her unhappiness or for the fact that I made a choice. She admits that she had the opportunity to solve problems inside herself and she didn't have to run away, realizing that it was a stupid and immature decision. She understands that none of the factors that led to her unhappiness was my fault and that there was nothing I could have done differently. She admits that she found irreplaceable qualities in me and deeply regrets that she did not appreciate what she had. She feels strongly disgusted with herself for her actions and repeatedly expresses it. Her apologies are not limited only to treason. She takes responsibility for the destruction of our family and the negative impact on my life. She never thought about the consequences of her actions and naively believed that she could magically get rid of her harmful behavior. She had no idea how much she would devastate me, our once close-knit family, and the people in our lives. As a result, even her own family now treats her with disrespect. It never occurred to her that she could get caught and cause such deep pain to someone else. Faced with the harsh reality, she realized what boundless darkness and its terrible consequences are. She realized the enormity of her actions and deeply regrets that she sees them only now. Obviously, she should have understood the consequences from the very beginning and come to the conclusion that she was no longer an immature 18-year-old girl. According to her current behavior, it seems that she is focused solely on saving herself, not caring about others. At the same time, she is determined to prove that her actions are not dictated by selfish motives. She refuses to accept any financial help from me and intends to do everything on her own. She is strong-willed and ready to cope with everything on her own. Moreover, she even allows me to have relationships with other women, despite the pain that it can cause her. She has already started to put up with the fact that I am dating other women since I informed her about the termination of our relationship. It seems that I hesitated to leave for a long time, as my thoughts have been fluctuating back and forth over the past few months. As the day of our meeting with the lawyer approaches, I wonder if I will feel regret in the future. I imagine a scenario in which I see her with a new man, watch her succeed as a devoted and contented wife, remain faithful, and excel as a mother. At the same time, I wonder if I will ever be able to reach the level of happiness that I experienced in the past years. Also, I have to consider that because of our son, I will inevitably have to communicate with her for the next 15 years or so. On the other hand, I feel anxious about the preservation of the relationship, fearing that she may not live up to the high expectations that she places on herself. I worry that, in this case, disappointment will be inevitable for both of us. I'm afraid that she may return to cheating, and then I will lose a few more years of my life. I'm afraid that if I stay, then in five years, when I'm over 30, I'll regret wasting precious time. Those who have already broken up with a relationship, have you ever regretted your decision after seeing significant changes in a person? She promises me that such a betrayal will never happen again because now she understands what harm it does to our son. She didn't think about it before. The fact that her whole family knows about her act makes her very tense, 
as they will also leave her if she threatens our family again. The words of a deceiver are difficult to trust. They have less weight than the words of a person addicted to illegal substances living on the street. She recognizes this reality and hopes that she will have the opportunity to prove that she has really changed. I decided to take the test because she admitted to having unprotected intimate relationships. The difficulty lies in figuring out how to overcome the presence of other men in her past. It is this uncertainty that still makes me doubt whether I will be able to continue this relationship. At the same time, I also think about how others manage to survive a breakup with previous partners who previously had 10 or even 20 relationships without hesitation. She quickly ended their 7-year friendship, although there is an opportunity to get revenge by contacting him. I do not believe that revenge will help me move forward. I sincerely doubt that she will ever reunite with her lover, regardless of whether we decide to stay together or separate. I am determined to go down the path of divorce. Marriage, for me, is a unique and sacred union that happens only once in a lifetime. Therefore, I am not going to remarry in the future. The legal aspects of the contract are unpleasant for almost every man, and I decided never to put myself in such a position again, especially after experiencing it now. I made a bet with myself, being sure that I would never divorce her because I believed that she was the only one. Unfortunately, I lost this bet, and it became a valuable lesson for me. After such a deception, we will never take risks again. She confessed to me that throughout her life, she had been treated exceptionally well, and she had never met bad men. She has never experienced mistreatment or infidelity, but paradoxically, despite having everything in her life, she felt unhappy. There was a feeling of emptiness, there was no dream or aspiration to which one could aspire. She realizes her mistake and admits that I was the best thing that could have happened in her life. Realizing that it is hardly possible to find a better man, she understands that no one could make her happy because the problem she faced existed only in her own perception and reality. It is clear that there was nothing I could have done differently to prevent her from cheating. She actively works on herself, strives for personal growth with the help of self-improvement books and individual consultations. She assures me that she is ready for a divorce if it means restoring my sense of security and getting my life back. There will be no future marriages, and if I reach the point of disappointment, I will have the freedom to separate from her and move on without any restrictions or financial losses. In addition, there was a fear of her friend because she knew about the previous affair. I understand that this situation is deeply disturbing, and even I find it difficult to comprehend it. It seems that she believed that these affairs would somehow fill the void inside her and revive her love for me. At the same time, she had sincere feelings with the latter person since they both faced similar circumstances in their marriages. Indeed, she admits that she likes affection in her new romantic relationship, and I do not dispute this fact. The first affair happened because she thought she had missed the experience since she was innocent before me. But when she realized that she hadn't missed anything significant, she was ready to return to our relationship. Unfortunately, in the case of the last betrayal, she had neither the intention nor the desire to stop it. In response, I took matters into my own hands and gave the AP one day to reveal the truth. When he didn't, I personally contacted his wife and informed her of the situation. He confessed to what he had done, and I asked her if he had told me all the details, given that I had already been privy to most of their conversations. I made it clear to her that he confessed not of his own free will but under my pressure. In this regard, I advised her to remain cautious, but she immediately said that she intended to stay and try to fix the situation as she is a person who believes in making efforts to fix the situation. Despite my misgivings, I am sure he will repeat his previous actions as she does not seem to hold him responsible for the infidelities. Reflecting on the situation, I do not seek revenge, but I regret that I did not know about her initial infidelity before I decided to marry her and start a family. Maybe life would have turned out differently, and maybe it would have been better for me, but in the end, it remains uncertain. But it would be possible to stumble upon another cheater, and I would not have a son, so I try to remain optimistic. Time has passed, and now I am a free person who enjoys life. My ex-wife is in a depressed state from which she is not even able to work. I actively help her financially and, of course, spend time with my son as often as possible. I also found out that her lover had stopped any communication with her and even quit his job. My ex-wife was left alone with a heavy feeling that she had ruined her life with her actions. Story 2 
Let me introduce myself. My name is Rick. During my school and college years, most of the people I came across called me a computer geek. Although I can't call myself the most attractive person on the planet, I certainly don't consider myself plain. At six feet tall and weighing about 170 pounds, I have light brown hair. Despite the fact that I am fond of computers, computer programs, and computer games, I manage to go on dates. It is safe to say that the hobby of technology has been a constant occupation in my life since I cannot recall a case when I was not interested in these topics. When someone had problems with the computer, he instinctively turned to me for help. It was thanks to this reputation that I met Karen, who later became my beloved wife. This story began seven years ago when we were students at the University of Wisconsin. While Karen was studying law under the ABL program, I immersed myself in the world of computer science. Karen aspired to become a corporate lawyer, and I was fascinated by expanding my knowledge of computers and programming. It was at this time that Karen encountered difficulties in mastering the computer system. In search of help, she turned to one of the teachers of the Department of Computer Science, who referred her to me, recognizing my knowledge in this area. I was happy to offer my help. As a result of our joint work, I helped Karen understand the computer, which allowed her to significantly expand her capabilities in solving various computer problems. Throughout the journey, an incredible bond developed between us, which grew into a true friendship that made us inseparable. So let me introduce you to Karen, a charming 180 centimeters tall person with stunning blonde curls and an amazing figure. Undoubtedly, she is a very beautiful girl. In addition to physical data, Karen has an outstanding personality, easily establishing contacts with any person. Her sympathy does not require much effort, and I felt that I was genuinely attracted to her. Over time, my affection for her grew exponentially, and eventually, I fell madly in love with her. She embodies everything that most men want and exceeds all my expectations. Despite everything I stumbled upon her, and she not only discovered me but also fell deeply in love. Although this happens rarely, it's hard for me to imagine something more unusual. After studying for two years in college, Karen came to the conclusion that her desire to become a lawyer would remain unfulfilled, and she began to get a job as a lawyer's secretary. Eventually, a well-known brokerage firm noticed her talents and offered her a job, which she gladly took up. Surprisingly, just two months later, we were married. Despite the difficulties, she worked hard and provided for us while I was getting an education. Her single-mindedness, determination, and goodwill allowed her to climb the ladder of success, as a result of which she was transferred to the respected Chicago headquarters. There, she took the position of assistant head of the legal department of the firm. Meanwhile, I successfully completed my computer science degree and realized that I was going to have a lucrative career in the field of computer game development. Realizing this, I started doing business and created my own business. Over the years, I have created many popular computer games that are probably familiar to you or your children. I have accumulated a large fortune that allows me to lead a comfortable life without overworking. As a result of a successful career, my partner Karen and I moved to Highland Park, a charming suburb of Chicago located on the shores of Lake Michigan. Despite financial stability, we continue to work not out of necessity but because we sincerely like what we do. To keep myself from stagnating, I opened an underground business in Milwaukee. The new case is related to the investigation of fraud with computer programs through my company, McAfee Inc., which is conveniently located just an hour's drive from my place of residence. I established contacts with the Institute of Computer Technology, which provided me with confidential communications. At first, I had a modest customer base, but thanks to positive word of mouth, it was constantly expanding. Currently, McAfee Inc. has about 150 clients and usually conducts five to six projects at the same time. The companies using our services express deep satisfaction with our work, and the financial results are very profitable. Last year, our revenue exceeded $3 million, which testifies to our success. To ensure effective work, I hired a highly qualified office manager, Carrie, and I have signed contracts with numerous computer experts, just like me who do the bulk of our investigative work. In order to comply with the principles of objectivity, we alternate these specialists in different projects, not allowing them to get too attached to a particular client. Our company, in turn, consists only of Carrie, me, and the specialists we hired. 
As payment for their services, they receive a percentage of the cost of the project. Since the software industry is highly profitable, maintaining strict confidentiality and secrecy is of paramount importance. That's why I always remain anonymous. I am completely unknown to all employees of the company, including Carrie. This is mainly due to the fact that I constantly hide my identity by changing clothes during research, as well as the desire to keep the absolute secret of my participation. Over the years, I have honed my skills in creating various disguises to deceive everyone around me. I get a salary for working on the case just like any other employee of the investigative department, however, the earnings go to a separate account opened by me under a pseudonym. Most of the investigations are carried out by my contract employees, but from time to time, I personally take up the case just for the thrill. Karen doesn't know anything about CSFI, so I cleverly use the excuse of visiting my game distributor in Milwaukee to escape for a few days and investigate. Despite the fact that my entire business of computer games for CSFI is conducted via the internet, I still arrive at the company's apartment in Milwaukee where I quietly park my luxury Beamer in the garage and, after changing into different camouflage suits, go to my destination in a company car. Currently, I drive a Buick car to the office to collect investigation materials and travel wherever it is necessary to fulfill my official duties. Sometimes these are local trips, sometimes to New York, Southeast Asia, or anywhere else. After completing the assigned tasks, I return to Milwaukee, do the same procedure in reverse order, and go home. You can assume that during all these trips, I indulge in infidelity, taking every opportunity to meet women and betray my wife. Contrary to popular belief, I am deeply devoted to my wife and our marriage, and would never intentionally harm her. But the same cannot be said about Karen, and that is why I feel obliged to share this story. In my quest to get to the truth, I took up the investigation of the alleged sale of the source code of the software company, Marco, by one of its programmers to a rival company. Jeff Marks developed a unique program for monitoring securities transactions, and I saw an opportunity to better understand Karen's work by personally immersing myself in this investigation. The company is located in Oakbrook, a suburb of Chicago. I came up with the idea that it would be nice to visit local restaurants and clubs, dressed in a familiar environment. It may even be possible to make playful acquaintances with new people, but I had no idea what surprises awaited me and what the nature of the investigation would be. Armed with all the necessary information provided by Carrie, my office manager, I decided to stay at the Drake Hotel in Oakbrook, conveniently located just a short drive from Marco's software. Upon arrival at Marco's, Jeff Marks met me. After a short wait, he stood tall and handsome. Jeff embodied the classic image of an attractive man. He was not only charming and sociable, but the very fact of his presence had a calming effect on me, causing sincere sympathy. He kindly invited me to his office, where he shared his suspicions and told me how I should conduct an investigation. With great generosity, he provided me with all the necessary resources right in his office. In addition, he did not forget to inform his colleagues that I hold a respected position as a special projects manager for one of their valued clients, who is tasked with solving any issues regarding the application of the program in cooperation with my company. I believe that the approach we had chosen would be successful, and we acted accordingly. But on the second day of my presence in the company, I revealed the truth about Jeff's suspicions. It turned out that one of his employees, a programmer named Tom, was actually selling the source code, and I found out exactly what method he used. While I was documenting my findings, Jeff's cell phone suddenly rang. Since he was not in the room, I couldn't help but look at it. To my surprise, the caller ID displayed Karen's name and my wife's phone number. My first impulse was to grab the phone and surprise her. But as I was thinking, the thought came to me that her company must be using Jeff's software. The thought that she found out about my presence here caused me shock and amusement. All my efforts to conceal my identity and involvement in CSFI would have been in vain. I couldn't help being ironic, but my laughter was quickly replaced by a heartbreaking feeling when Jeff returned to his office and answered my wife's call. The words he uttered shattered my brain, Karen, I'm glad you called. I had an incredible time last night. Would you like to have dinner with me at the Morton restaurant at 6.30pm? Okay, I'll see you there. After that, we can go to your place for dessert. Take care of yourself. I was completely shocked by this unexpected invitation. 
I was so shocked that I probably looked like a zombie, and I was sick to the point that I thought I might lose my breakfast right on the table. My heart was pounding so hard that I was afraid I might have a heart attack. I went to the toilet and sat there in a stall until my pulse calmed down. I could not recover. Karen's action took me by surprise. I always thought that our love for each other was mutual, and only now I found out that today she is dating Jeff again. Jeff's comments about the previous night spoke of a level of intimacy that could only occur through intimate contact. It was hard for me to understand how this could have happened because I had no signs that Karen was unfaithful. Our intimate life has always been satisfactory, and she has never expressed dissatisfaction or unmet needs. Understanding her infidelity left me completely bewildered and heartbroken. I couldn't help but wonder how she could betray me, the one she claimed to love. Was her love for me sincere? Thinking about our marriage, I couldn't help but wonder if it wasn't built on a lie. At that moment, it seemed to me that my whole world was collapsing around me. All the efforts and sacrifices I had made for our relationship suddenly seemed in vain to me. But after regaining my composure and not allowing myself to lose control of the situation, I realized how important it was to confirm my suspicions with hard evidence. It is very important to collect as many facts as possible before making any conclusions. I decided to implement the action plan and return to the office with Jeff to complete the project. My goal was to complete the work as soon as possible in order to allocate the next days to study this problem. Despite the fact that it was difficult for me to remain calm, I did not succumb to the desire to enter into a conflict with Jeff, realizing that this would be an unwise step. To my disappointment, Jeff, with a smug expression on his face, apologized for his inappropriate words in my presence. He confessed. I'm sorry to say this in front of you, but this woman is incredibly attractive. I met her a few weeks ago in the office of one of my clients. At the first meeting, we immediately found a common language. Despite the fact that I didn't like him at first, I understood why Karen became attached to him because it was incredibly pleasant to communicate with him. He went on to say that Karen had told him that the next time her husband, whom she called Computer Boy, went out of town on business, she would ask him to meet. Just yesterday she called, and it was impossible for me to resist the charm of such an amazing woman. Everything was bubbling inside me, but I managed to pull myself together. She confessed that she married a computer scientist because she knew that over time he would become rich and provide her with a comfortable life. He said with a grin, attractive women like me still can't resist me. Curiosity got the better of me, and I asked if she really loved him. To my surprise, she confessed her love for him but admitted that she likes passionate affairs on the side. It's amazing how much information I got from him that morning. The mention of the computer boy left me in no doubt that it really was my Karen. It became painfully clear that she had betrayed our marriage by getting involved not only with him but also possibly with others. I couldn't help but realize the extent of my awareness. After assessing the situation, I realized that I needed more concrete evidence before taking any further action. In order to collect this evidence, I decided to leave for the whole day and return the next morning. When I got to the car, I dialed Karen's number on my mobile phone. During our conversation, she showed excessive affection and care, expressing how much she misses me. But deep down, I felt disgusted by her behavior. I asked her about her plans for the day, and she replied that she had a busy work schedule and that she could go to dinner with friends, informing me that it might be another day or two before I returned home. I assured her that I would contact her later in the evening. She specifically asked me not to call her as she did not know when she would return after a walk with her friends. I didn't know that she really wanted to avoid interference during intimacy with Jeff. Feeling unwell, I made a decision to gather evidence of her infidelity. I developed a plan on the way home. I stopped by an electronics store where I purchased five modern wireless mini surveillance cameras and a modem. I planned to observe various rooms of our house, the kitchen, the living room, the family room, the master bedroom, and even the guest bedroom. Not knowing exactly where she would hold her secret trysts, I wanted to ensure that all possible places were monitored. When I got home, I quietly turned off the surveillance camera using the remote control. In order not to draw attention to an unfamiliar car parked by the road, I deftly maneuvered in the garage. Inside the house, I thoughtfully rewound the tape to erase all traces of my stay in the basement workshop. I carefully mounted a network of surveillance cameras, connecting them to a modem and a voice recorder. 
This simple scheme allowed me to get convenient access to videos on the internet, which made it possible to secretly observe every corner of the house. Satisfied with the work done, I left the house, got into the car, and deftly backed out onto the roadway. After driving around the block, I took the opportunity to turn on the surveillance cameras again with the remote control. If she doesn't look at the surveillance footage and doesn't find a time gap, she will remain unaware of any activity in the house. Besides, Karen hadn't bothered to look at the records at all. That was my concern. As soon as I finished with these things, hunger began to creep up on me, and I decided to visit the nearest pizzeria located not far from the hotel. I decided to drink just a couple of bottles of beer as I wanted to keep a clear state of mind while watching the events unfolding at home. After dinner, I went to the hotel and started setting up the computer, wanting to find out the truth. Despite the rumors that reached me, I did not lose hope, desperately wishing that all this was a colossal misunderstanding. I prayed that she wouldn't betray me and wasn't just interested in her luxurious lifestyle. The weight of emotions became unbearable, and eventually, I burst into tears. As the clock approached 8 in the evening, I saw her car pulling into the garage, and for a moment, I was overcome with relief. Perhaps, I thought, nothing terrible will happen. But my heart sank when the surveillance camera abruptly turned off, blocking my view of the passage. I switched to the kitchen camera and watched her enter the house. She was wearing one of my favorite outfits, a short black dress revealing a deep neckline and supported by thin spaghetti straps. Up to this point, I just loved how she looked in this outfit, but the fact that she put it on now entering the kitchen destroyed my affection. I knew she would never have chosen this outfit for dinner with her friends. She wore it to captivate another man, usually me but not today. Tears welled up in my eyes again when I finally realized that this was not just a mistake. Karen wasn't the person I thought she was. I was struck by this discovery, and I didn't have to wait long for Jeff to enter the kitchen. It looks like she accidentally left the garage door open, and he took the opportunity and parked the car in the space assigned to me, hoping not to attract the attention of neighbors. As soon as he entered the kitchen, Karen immediately hugged him, and they shared a passionate kiss while he gently caressed her back. Interrupting the kiss, she offered to go into the bedroom, and they both took a bottle of wine and two glasses, then left the kitchen. I quickly switched to the camera in the living room, having only caught a glimpse of how they passed by, heading to the bedroom. For some reason, thoughts and questions were swarming in my head. I had the stupid thought that maybe she would prefer to have sex with him in the guest room rather than in her bed, but reality proved the opposite. When I switched to the guest room camera, they were not visible. Instead, my gaze fell on her bedroom, where they were sitting on the bed, passionately exchanging kisses. Karen uncorked a bottle of wine and poured each a glass, raising a toast to a handsome man and pleasant experiences. The glasses clinked against each other. They took a few sips and lowered them into the glasses. At that moment, Jeff got to his feet, and Karen eagerly unbuttoned his trousers, a mischievous smile playing on her lips. I couldn't believe my eyes watching what was happening in front of me. Let me explain, there was no tension, no desire for this to happen. If there was even the slightest hint that this was happening for the first time, I would have intervened, not just watched. But all signs pointed to the fact that this was not the first case, and attempts to stop it were useless. Strong evidence was needed to decide on further actions. Unfortunately, everything I was afraid of has happened. Oh, Jeff, that was the most incredible experience I've ever had. Last night was truly wonderful, it was just unbelievable, she exclaimed. The way you manipulate me is strangely fascinating to me. Maybe I'll never let Computer Boy ignore me again, she giggled. Could we repeat this tomorrow night, Mr. Inadequate? Unfortunately, we'll be back in a couple of days, he replied. At that moment, my heart shattered. Until she said those words, I believed that she loved me but wanted more intimacy than the one I provided. Until she said that, I planned to talk to her, hoping that she would stop her actions out of love. But according to her, it became clear that she really didn't love me and didn't care about my feelings. At that moment, I realized that our marriage was doomed to break up. I could not continue to live with a person who did not feel love and respect for me. Despite my unwavering affection for her, it became clear that she had no love or respect for me. The love I once felt for her suddenly faded. I didn't expect such an outcome, but it became an obvious reality for me. I closed myself emotionally. 
the evidence I had gathered was enough, and, to be honest, I didn't want to find out anything more. I don't know anything about their further actions, whether he stayed overnight or immediately left. It didn't matter to me anymore. It seemed impossible to imagine a more crushing blow to the heart than the one I experienced at that moment. My love was dead. Despite the need to move forward, I couldn't help but feel sad about the loss. Depressed, I turned off everything, went to bed, and let loose tears until morning came. When I got out of bed and saw my reflection in the mirror, I realized that the upcoming day would be difficult. My eyes were swollen, I looked disheveled, but I understood that the task was set. Thoughts of ending our marriage and taking revenge on her for hurting me consumed me. I understood that revenge was immature, but I thought it was necessary for my healing. Surprisingly, I didn't hold a grudge against Jeff either. It would be unfair if he had an affair with someone else's wife, destroyed their marriage, and did not face the consequences. I was determined to get back at him and then hopefully move away from this situation. I came to Jeff's office with a ready-made plan, confident that, being a computer-savvy person, I would be able to implement it without any problems. I wanted to make sure that there was no evidence pointing to me. Physical damage was no longer my desire, all I wanted was revenge, and both of them would pay a heavy price for it. When Jeff left for a meeting in the boardroom, I took the opportunity and found his keys in order to gain access to his house, where he kept archived copies of his source texts. I decided to make copies in advance. Although I already had authorized access to his computer system, I managed to gain unauthorized access to his security files and find out all the passwords belonging to him and his programmers. To ensure that his source code would be permanently deleted, I developed a small virus program. This program had to carefully find and erase all copies of his program located on all disks on his network, including computers connected to his home and his clients' devices. Anticipating the consequences, I knew that activating this program would lead to an immediate change of all passwords, which would actually deprive anyone of access to the system. In order to completely destroy his valuable program and himself, I decided to take drastic measures. Using my wife's computer at her workplace, I skillfully used her password to gain access to the tracking program. After that, I initiated the transfer of $200,000 from my work account to Jeff's account, but I didn't stop there. Next, I transferred these funds to a newly created account in Jeff's name in an offshore zone known as the Grandin Islands. Having completed all operations, I hurried to eliminate all traces of the money transfer. Although it would not be easy, I was sure that an experienced analyst would eventually be able to track these funds. I wasn't sure if Jeff and Karen had gotten close on Wednesday night, but I assumed they had. At the moment, I didn't care anymore. The next morning, Thursday, I scheduled the launch of my virus program at 9 a.m. On Friday, I gave Jeff my report on the theft of the program code and told him that CSFI would bill him for my services. Deep down, I knew that this bill would never be paid, but I didn't care anymore. When I left his office, he said goodbye to me, saying that it was nice to meet me. If only he knew the truth, he wouldn't have said those words. With a smile on my face, I held out my hand to him, wishing him luck. Deep down, I knew he would need it. Determined, I made it to his house, where I easily got inside using the spare keys that I had secretly copied. Inside, I came across a treasure trove of archived copies of his program. Without hesitation, I collected them all and went on a trip to Milwaukee. When I got to my apartment, I wasted no time making a cozy fire in the fireplace. While the flames danced, I carefully destroyed every copy of his program. You see, I was not going to profit from his abilities as a programmer, but I wanted to take revenge while preserving my honesty and honor. That Thursday night, I stayed put, looking forward to the impending chaos. And now, the question remains relevant. How did all this happen? On Friday morning, I went into the office to inform Carrie about the completion of the project and that the Marco software was ready for billing. She assured me that she would perform all the necessary actions and ensure that the fee was credited to my account. After leaving the office, I returned home, where I was met by a distraught Karen in tears. She said that she was sent home in connection with the ongoing investigation of securities fraud, specifically with the transfer of money from our account. I was stunned by this news and asked her to provide me with more detailed information. Karen said that she only knew about the transfer of money to the name of a certain Jeff Marcus, and that was the end of her knowledge on this issue. 
I asked her about Jeff Marcus, and she said she met him at the office a few weeks ago. At the same time, she admitted that she did not know him very well and was not aware of the current situation. Marco's software was in a complete mess. Everyone was shocked. Around 9 o'clock in the morning, all the employees were working hard, and suddenly everything stopped. None of the programmers, including Jeff, could access the system, and incessant phone calls indicated that customers could not use the tracking program. Although I was not a direct witness to the events, my description accurately reflects the unfolding situation. I later found out that Jeff fired Tom because of his involvement in the source code theft. Surprisingly, Jeff also blamed Tom for the unfortunate turn of events. Frankly speaking, Tom was not completely innocent, so it seems fair that he should bear responsibility for the consequences. As a programmer, I firmly believe that anyone who interferes with the source code should be held accountable. During the investigation, it was established that $200,000 was transferred to Jeff's account, but he categorically denied his involvement and blamed Karen for this. In response, Karen categorically denied her involvement and blamed Jeff. Throughout the investigation, I managed to remain calm until Jeff inadvertently revealed that he and Karen had an intimate relationship. This revelation made me turn to Karen, who confessed everything with tears in her eyes, expressing deep remorse and begging me for forgiveness. She claimed that it was a solitary act caused by her overwhelming loneliness during my long absence. Although I realized that her explanation was false, I decided not to dispute it at that time. It no longer mattered. As a result, Jeff was found guilty of securities fraud, fined $50,000, and sentenced to six months in prison. I was informed that he would be released in three months for good behavior. But unfortunately, after his release, he lost both his program and his company. As far as I know, he is currently working as a programmer for one of his competitors, coincidentally along with Tom. One more note, Karen was fired from her job. I explained to her that I could not survive her infidelity and subsequently received divorce papers from her. Taking into account the infidelity clause in her marriage contract, which is worth mentioning since I am a computer enthusiast, her compensation was only 10% of our net worth. After being charged with securities fraud, she was fined $50,000 and received a three-year probation period. Despite the fact that she managed to avoid a prison sentence, her financial situation was far from ideal since she had only $150,000 left. Taking into account that her share was $200,000, it became obvious that buying a decent house in the Chicago area was unattainable. Therefore, she made the difficult decision to move to Milwaukee, where she eventually found a job as a waitress in one of the local bars. Despite the difficulties, I am sure that she will succeed because her charismatic character remains unchanged. And yet, her new life in Milwaukee does not compare to the comfortable lifestyle that we once led. Goodbye, computer boy. I hope she will never forget the depth of my love for her, even though it hurts her to think about me. At the end of this story, I decided to sell the house in Highland Park and move into an apartment in Milwaukee. With a significant $2 million from our general funds and another $1 million in CSFI, I realized that it was finally time to embrace my wealth and indulge myself. The sale of the company brought in another $4 million, which strengthened my resolve. To my surprise, Carrie admitted that she always recognized me, no matter how I disguised myself. I absolutely adore this woman and often and passionately express my love for her. She reciprocates it. We've both moved on from full-time jobs and are now enjoying the fruits of our hard work. After I filed for divorce, we got married right away. This December, we are looking forward to the arrival of our first child. When I feel the need for productive work, I direct my energy to writing programs.